What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. It is Heart DFS and today we have another NBA slate breakdown on DraftKings. Nice two gamer today for the NBA playoffs second round. Very excited. So if you're new to the channel, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Do appreciate all the support and all the new supporters, all the new subscribers. Do greatly appreciate you guys. So definitely make sure to check out my channel. Post daily NBA prize pick videos as well as these daily NBA slates breakdowns on DraftKings. Uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter at HeartDFS. Answering any questions you guys might have, putting up extra prize pick lines or plays, uh, ones I like, and uh, DFS cores for DraftKings as well. So definitely check me out on Twitter, Hard DFS. Now let's get into the slate breakdown for today. Nice two gamer, as I mentioned, Philly versus the Heat and the Mavs versus the Suns. As we know, the big news, Joel Embiid is out. So what does that leave us with? Harden, Harris, and Maxi to step up. Harden is priced at 9-8. Uh, as we've seen since the trade, Harden has pretty much been like the third option. Safe to say almost the you know 3B as uh, Maxi's both stepped up to try to basically take that second role. And then Tobias, the past month and a half leading into the playoffs and the playoffs, he's really stepped up as well. And so Harden wasn't aggressive, just more as like a pass first point guard, which, you know, was working for them. Obviously, they were doing well, got in the playoffs, beat the Raptors. But in being being out does leave the option for Harden to become the main guy once again. Um, it is slightly risky just because, as we've seen, even with him, you know, being the main option, he's sometimes not taking the initiative to be that guy, which is interesting because uh, it's James Harden. He should be able to get his own because he's one of the best players in the NBA. But I don't mind going to him at 9-8. It is slightly risky that he doesn't stay aggressive in this game, but they're going to need him to at least win one of these games for them, if not both, if they want to you know, stay close in the series. So I'd, I'd like him a decent amount at 9-8. Uh, you just hope that he's that he's aggressive and that he's the main, main scorer for this side. But if they're going to want to win a game, it's obviously going to have to come from James Harden. Tobias Harris, 8K. I actually like it a decent amount. Obviously, the price isn't too great, but his usage really gets a bump with uh, Embiid or one of those main guys out. So, obviously, Embiid or Harden. And with Embiid out, really like Tobias at 8K. Obviously, the price is up there, but we've seen him do really well the past month and a half. As you can see, last game, 19, 11, 2, 40 fancy points. Before that, only 16 and 7, but... 15 and 11, 11 and 12, 20 and 10. He's getting a ton of rebounds, which you do like to see. Um, so yeah, I like I like Tobias Harris a good amount, 8K. The price, obviously, as I mentioned a few times, is not the best, but he's a guy that can easily pay off that price. They're gonna need him to score, and they're gonna need him to rebound. Um, gonna need him to be either option A or B for when it comes to scoring. So do really like him a good amount. Max, he's priced up there, 7-4. Same thing, you know, all three of these guys are going to need to step up and score the ball a ton, do a bunch of the peripheral stats, rebounding assists, so they're all going to see 40-plus minutes, and so you're going to need at least one of them in your lineups for today. Um, I'd lean Harden and Harris over Maxi, but obviously with the price difference, we've seen Maxi have huge games. And yeah, so I, I don't mind getting to either one of these guys. I'd say I prefer Harden and Harris, but don't mind getting to Maxi as well. I want to get to DeAndre Jordan. We'll have to wait to see who they start at center. It will probably be DeAndre Jordan. He'll probably get close to 20 minutes, but I don't think you have to go there at 5-2 at all. I think the guy you do want to play is Paul Reed. He's a decent point per minute guy when he's played, you know, sparingly off the bench. Uh, but when you see him, 21 minutes against Detroit, obviously a bad team, but he went 12 of 14, 25 points, six rebounds, two assists, uh, a block, four steals. Obviously, that helped out the score a ton, but good point per minute guy, 4,200. He should see, you know, at least 20 minutes off the bench, I would think, with, you know, no Embiid. Uh, DeAndre Jordan, who's just absolutely terrible now. So I do like Paul Reed a good amount today. That's a nice value play at 4,200. I know he'll be super popular. So we'll have to wait on the starting lineup, but do really like that. Uh, Danny Green will probably see 30-plus minutes. Maybe he has a little bit uh, more shots. Maybe he'll get closer to that 10-shot uh, mark, but, 
you know, okay, played 4,800. Don't think I'd go there. You know, Thibault will play a lot more. You know, he doesn't have to play. He, he couldn't play in Toronto, so he did miss those games. And then they kind of just rode with Danny Green. But I do expect Thibault to play a lot more. They're going to need his defense against uh, Jimmy Butler. So do expect him to get closer to that 20-minute mark, if not more. Especially if they go small ball. You know, Miami isn't too big of a team. So I do think Thibault should get a good amount of run. 3,300 looks like a decent value play. Obviously, he's not the best scorer usually out there for his defense, but he can get you in the 20 fancy point range if he's playing well and a few threes, so I don't mind him. Cork Maz maybe gets, you know, 10, 15 minutes at most. I do think, you know, there will be points where Philly does go small. They're going to need scoring off the bench, so if you want to take an extremely risky dart throw, you know, you could definitely look to shake Milton. You know, with giving Harden, Harris, Maxi, those guys like 40 plus minutes, they're going to need some scoring and some guys to come off the bench to, uh, you know, give some good minutes. Shake Milton's a good score off the bench. As we can see, you know, he's, there's games where he started, he's done really well. Games where he's come off the bench, you know, put up a good amount of points. So 3,700, I say he's definitely worth taking a look at for like a tournament dart throw off the bench. Otherwise, I don't think he'd get to anyone. Um, down here, like Niang should see like 20, maybe 25 minutes, maybe a few more, but not going to be too, too involved with the offense. It's pretty much just me. The offense that's come from the three guys at the top. And then you're going to want to take a guy, like a shot on a guy like Paul Reed as some value play. And then I'd say either Thibel or Milton. Otherwise, it does it for me on my, the Philly side. On the Miami side, Jimmy Butler, 9 2. Going to play. I don't know why the Heat list everyone is questionable. It makes no sense, but Jimmy Butler will play 9,200. Obviously done very well against the Hawks, as he should. A little bit, you know, I guess tougher of a matchup against the 76ers. Not really scared, uh, especially with Embiid out. Should be able to get to the basket easily. Not scared of Tobias Harris' defense. Or, you know, really viable. So I do expect Jimmy to do well. Price is up there. Don't think I'm going to get to him just because of the price. But I do like him in this matchup. I like Bam. You know, I've been on him the whole Hawks series. He only blessed us with two 40-plus fancy point games. Otherwise, he's trash. Um, 7,300 going against most likely Paul Reed or DeAndre Jordan. So I really like Bam at 7,300. Looks great today. Tyler Hero, I, he was a little bit of a letdown in that series. You know, only one game, 30-plus fancy points. So I do like this bounce back spot for Tyler Hero at 6,400. You know, his price really hasn't changed. He'd kind of like it to be, you know, a little bit less, but I do expect him to come off the bench, go against those Philly guys uh, and score well. Do like Tyler Hero a good amount. Lowry is obviously out, so a guy like Gabe Vincent has been starting. I think you can expect, you know, close to 30 minutes once again from him. He's more out there just to play some good defense and kind of, you know, get some assists, rebounds, not really score too much. But at 4,400, is you know, he's a decent play. If he hits a few more of his shots, you know, he could get you closer to 30 fancy points. So I don't mind him today. At 4,400 is a nice value play. Victor Oladipo maybe earned himself, you know, maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes off the bench. A little risky because obviously all those guys were out. You know, Lowry was out. Uh, Jimmy Butler was out in that last game versus the Hawks. Victor played 36 minutes and had a great game. Was very aggressive. I do expect him to come off the bench today and play, I'd say, at least 20 minutes. So at 5-1, I don't think he had to go there. Struis looks like a decent play, 4,700. Playing about 30-plus minutes. Shooting the ball a good amount, which you do like to see. Obviously, he's scoring-dependent, but he's been doing well peripheral stat-wise, getting some steals as well. So 4,700, don't mind him. He's a better play, obviously, than Danny Green at that price. P.J. Tucker looks like a good value play. Obviously, he's kind of trash when it comes to offense you need him to hit his corner threes but he's been doing well uh when it comes to rebounding the ball and getting assists which has been surprising so i don't mind him at 4k you know as a nice value play for today at power forward duncan robinson's really kind of falling out of the rotation because of the struce martin don't think he had to do it play 21 minutes he was hurt a few times in that last game but I think you really just want to take a shot on the value plays like guys like Tucker, Struess, and then take a shot on a guy like Bam or Tyler. On the Dow side, Luca looks way too... Uh, his price isn't that high yet. He should be closer to 12K. Only got 
he hasn't gotten you know 60 plus fantasy points yet in the three games he's been back for the playoffs I do expect that to happen you know at least one or two of these games in this series against Phoenix obviously the Suns are very good defensively and they'll most likely look to stop Luka make everyone else on the team try to beat them I would assume that's their game plan because the normal game plan is for Luka to dominate pretty much you know everything runs through Luka so if he's doing well team's gonna win and so Obviously, the, the main goal is to stop Luka, make him pass up the ball, make those other guys beat the Suns. So even though that is, you know, they're going to be tough on Luka defensively, he's one of the best players in the NBA. Even if he's not hitting a shot, he's going to get you there with the rebounds, assists. You know, he can get to the blocks and steals as well. So I just think there's, it's really hard to stop him. And at 11-2, I do think he's worth playing today. Brunson... 7-2, talked, I've talked about him, you know, the whole playoffs and leading into the playoffs. He's just, he's looking to get his money. He's a free agent after this season, so he's been playing very well. 7,200 is, you know, kind of pricey for a guy who's pretty much, you know, scoring dependent with Luka back. As you see, his assists really dropped off. Rebounds have kind of fallen as well. So he's pretty much just out there to score and, you know, play decent defense. Uh, shots, as you can see, Past three games, Lucas has been back 18, 20, 17, you know, 35 minutes, 37, 38. He's a guy who's been playing, you know, most of the game, shooting the ball almost 20 times a game, which you do like to see with Luca. So 7,200 is not bad. They're going to need a second guy to score. And as I said, if the Suns try to game plan around Luca, expect a guy like Brunson to step up. Obviously, not the best salary price, but someone else is going to need to score on this team besides Luca. Do really like Brunson. Finney Smith and Bullock are pretty much the same plays. You know, both float around 25 to 30 fancy points. They're going to play the whole game. Kind of do more of the peripherals than score. So at their prices, I don't think you need to go there. If you want to take it, you know, dart throw on someone, I'd say take it on Dinwiddie. Kind of floating around that 30 minute mark. There's some games where he doesn't shoot the ball a ton. Last game he did. I just like him as like a dart throw off the bench because as we saw in the regular season when Luka and Brunson started, Brunson obviously wasn't as aggressive as he is now just because he's done really well you know prior to Luka coming back and with Luka back so Dinwiddie's kind of taken a, a third role on the team when it comes to scoring and being aggressive but he played really well off the bench during the you know kind of closer to the end of the regular season when he was coming off the bench you know Luka and Brunson were starting he had some good games you know 20 high 20s 30s I mean he touched I think 40 fancy points a few times Coming off the bench with those guys, uh, you know, starting. So it's 5,600. Don't mind him uh, as a dart throw, tournament play. Should see, you know, about 30 minutes. It's just sometimes offensively he's not aggressive, but he'll be very low owned today in the tournaments. As I mentioned, you know, Bullock, Finney Smith, the same player. Don't think I'd get to them, you know, okay plays at their price. The two guys I really like today are Kleber and Powell. The reason why I like him is DeAndre Ayton on the other side is obviously going to play you know a good amount of minutes pretty much the whole game, and they're going to need guys like Kleber and Powell to play to you know be able to defend Ayton. Obviously, Kleber is the better offensive player, better shooter when it comes to threes. Obviously, he hasn't shot the ball well the past you know three games, but <clears throat> excuse me, he's going to need to play I'd say at least twenty, sorry wrong player, twenty five minutes. Maybe a little bit more if, you know, some for some reason, uh, Powell gets in foul trouble. So I don't mind taking a shot on either one of these centers. They're going to have to play a good amount of minutes just because they need to guard DeAndre Ayton. Um, so I do think I'd slightly prefer Powell just because he's a little bit cheaper. He'll probably get the start. Obviously not the best offensive player. Minutes are kind of fluctuating. Uh, he can get in a little bit of foul trouble sometimes. So there's a slight risk, but... I think you got to take a shot on one of these centers. Maxi is obviously the better scorer. Powell is just a little bit better of a rebounder. Can get involved with the pick and roll with you know Brunson and uh, Luca. So I think I'd slightly prefer him just because of that reason. Just because he's not as tied to you know only hitting his threes, he can get you some rebounds and you know some putbacks, pick and roll. So I do think I prefer him over Kleber, but I do think you need to play one of them because one of them is going to play. Big minutes when it comes to guarding DeAndre Ayton. Phoenix side, Booker's back. There's no lines out on him as of yet, just because 
we don't really know the news other than him if he's you know restricted if he's playing the full game obviously played 32 minutes the last game which you do like to see has had three days rest so i do expect him to be back to normal ish there's that slight risk that he could you know slain, strain his um leg but 8500 really like him today as that kind of like lower owned tournament dart throw just because of people not knowing if he's going to play the full amount of game, minutes if he's going to you know play well just because of that injury so i do like him obviously chris paul moves more back down to like that two two a you know three a role of scoring Obviously shot 14 to 14 last game. Can't expect that again. 33 points. Shoulder the load. Got them the win. Do expect him to move back down to more of his average of, you know, about 15 points per game. His average of assists should probably go up a little bit more with, you know, Devin Booker back on the floor. So I do like Booker over Paul. Paul is just a little too pricey for me. Uh, as we saw, he's kind of floating around that 8 8.2, 8 8.4 uh, salary when they were playing together in the regular season. So I don't think you have to go up to Chris Paul at 9,100. Just a little too pricey for me. Aiden, I actually like him a decent amount. Obviously, the price isn't the best for him. But he's one of those guys, if they do feature him in the offense, which they did a couple games against the Pelicans, you know, went off for 28 and 17. He's a really good center. It's obviously they just don't really need him because the offense obviously goes through Devin Booker and then Chris Paul. So he's more of like a three, three, a three B option. But I, you know, going against the Mavs bigs, Kleber and Powell, not scared of their defense. You know, they put up a ton of shots, so he should have a good amount of rebounding opportunities. Can get you those double double points when it comes to, you know, obviously points and rebounds. So I do like him a good amount. Playing, you know, 35 plus minutes pretty much in all those games against the pelicans um yeah i just really like deandre in a good amount today at 7700 obviously not the best price tag but should have a, a great opportunity to do well mikhail bridges guy who plays a whole game do expect his scoring average to go down a bit with booker back uh same with cam johnson do expect his minutes to go down a little bit uh the shot opportunities to go down i don't think you need to get to any of these wing guys for the suns Maybe take a shot in a guy like Crowder, 4,600. Obviously not the best score. Usually out there for his defense, but he can't you know, get to 30 fancy points if he's hitting his threes. Campaign will get a little bit of minutes off the bench, maybe you know, 15 at most. Don't think to do it. McGee, you could always take a shot on. I know his minutes are down, but if he gets you know his average of like 12 to 15 minutes, he can get you, you know, 20 plus fancy points if he's doing well. Especially in this matchup against the Mavs, you know. They have smaller, weaker bigs, so Javel McGee should be able to do, do well, a lot of rebounding opportunities, so I don't mind taking a dart throw on him at 3,300, some value as well, but pretty much it's just Devin Booker at the top for me, and then really it's Aiton over Paul as the second play in the Suns for me, and that really does it for today. This is kind of the route I'm looking to go. Luca and Booker, followed by some of these value plays of Paul, Reed, and Vincent, does leave you with a good amount left over to fill the other three slots. Uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter as I'll be making an updated core closer to the start of the games. Hit that like, subscribe button, and leave a comment. Uh, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys later today for an NBA prize pick video. Thank you. Peace.